So I thought we would hit next the um, rear of the unit. We have graphics module, compute module, SCSI box, MMSC tilt here. Uh, this machine is as deep as it looks. It's about an inch deep. Uh, this is the entirety of it here. This is in fact a standalone 486. It's powered off a uh, 220 volt supply, which is what the rest of the rack runs on. Um, and it is used for communication between the racks and powering up the entire rack. We'll get to that when we talk about power sequencing. Uh, next we will see the SCSI box here, uh, the aforementioned Origin 200, and then the graphics module. And we'll start at the beginning. This is the geometry engine here. We've got three, four raster manager cards in mine, or at least in this rack. We have display generator with eight of the 13W3 connectors, plus a couple of incendiaries, ancillary, sorry, gen locks, uh, calligraphy port, is video, things like that. My unit, or at least this particular rack, most of these don't have it. Uh, I think this one and this one and the other one that do have two pipes. So this is pipe zero, and this is pipe one. You'll notice that there's actually two slots less on this side than this side. Um, in between we have the crosstown board, but uh, general upshot, four raster managers on here, one geometry engine, one display generator, one geometry engine, one display generator, maximum of two raster managers. The board that sits right in the middle here, which has these two sucking big cables right here, is the crosstown. The crosstown uh, literally extends the signals from the back plane, the mid plane in this, through these cables down to the matching crosstown cards in the compute module. And these are just IO, uh, XIO cards, I'm sorry. Um, these cables here are actually almost identical to Kraylink cables. They have the same throughput. Electrically, they're um, almost identical. I believe that you can use uh, Kraylink cables for crosstown cables, but not the other way around. Uh, I don't even recall that's anecdotal, so don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that is right in reality. The compute nodes, uh, we have four node boards. Uh, each of these are 400 megahertz R12000, I believe. There's two processes per node board. We have the IO6G with um, obviously, you know, keyboard, serial, parallel, audio, ethernet, so on and so forth. The two cross towns. And then we have, in my case, this has an XIO board with a uh, VHDCI SCSI connector on it. Uh, each of these has two SCSI ports. No, I lied. Four SCSI ports. No, two SCSI ports. I'm sorry. Um, uh, you'll also notice this has a number more XI slots than the disk side. The cross towns, uh, it might be interesting to note, uh, we have two here. This cross town does this side. This cross town does this side. So in the case of a single pipe rack, this cable is not necessary. And similarly, the cross town board down here is not necessarily you only need the one. The power sequence, right. So, if you had a standalone rack, uh, we'll pretend this is standalone you would turn the graphics module to on. Power supply sits in the front here, power supply spools up, brings up the boards, boards will sit in a waiting state. You then go to system controller down here, bring this to the on position. Node boards will come up, system will come up, um, IREX will fire, it'll find the graphics controllers, everything will go from there. Well, technically the um, uh, the boot, prom, and everything like that will find the graphics system first, but IREX actually brings everything up. On a multi-system, things get somewhat more complex, as you would imagine. One system is designated the master, and I think that just happens to be the only one that usually has an MMSC, but not positive. I haven't fired these up, I'm afraid. So, what you do is... All the MMSCs are connected. They have an Ethernet port on the... Uh, face of it here. Uh, we can't see it because I have a skin on this side, but take my word for it. If you just have two racks, they'll hook straight to each other and uh, it'll do auto crossover. If you have more than that, you require a hub. 
Uh, I don't know. They probably sell SGI branded hubs, which I'm sure were obscenely expensive. But it's just a 10 base T connection, standard Ethernet. And you would hook all of the MMSCs together. And you would say, on your display controller, I'm sorry, on your display, power the system up. First MMSC comes on. Oh, I forgot a step. I'm sorry. To tell the system that they're all ready to go, you switch all of the MMSCs, MSCs to standby, not to on, which would bring the rack up. You set them to standby. So all of these are set to standby. Then you say, bring the system up. The MMSC will hit the soft power. The graphics controller will come up, sorry, the graphics module, then the compute module. It waits a preset period of time, and I believe you can configure that uh, so that you don't start popping breakers, and then it'll bring the next rack, and the next rack, and the next rack, until the, all of the racks are online. Nothing is booted, but they're powered up. Then, when everything is running, the MMSC sends a general reset to the whole array, which brings them to a booting stage. The master will fire first, IREX comes up, IREX will boot the additional node boards in this machine, then it starts going down the line, bringing all the node boards up until you have one compute cluster. As far as IREX is concerned, it's just one sucking big machine. But, as all of us are concerned, it is a really sweet supercomputer. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the SGI Onyx 2.